Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Um, first of all, a warm welcome to our webinar, uh, maximizing the use and value of disability data and data partnership for inclusive development. On behalf of the organizers, CBM Global Disability Inclusion, International Disability Alliance, the Stakeholder Group of Persons with Disabilities to the United Nations, SDGs, University of Pekin, um, China Disabled Person Federation Center for Information, and Nanjing University. It's a pleasure for me and for um, all the panelists today to um, have the opportunity to share more about how persons with disabilities we are engaged in advocating for more um, disability data. My name is Jose Viera. I'm the uh, Advocacy Director for the International Disability Alliance. And before um, diving um, deeply in our topic, I wanted to share some uh, housekeeping announcements that will enable us to have um, a better experience throughout the uh, webinar. Um, this webinar has a international sign interpretation, uh, which is uh, spotlighted um, and uh, hopefully all of you have already access to it. Also, we are providing live captioning in English, which you can access to either through the captioning um, box uh, located in the bottom of the screen, or through the link that is um, already available in the chat box. And finally, we have Chinese and English interpretation that can be accessed through the globe uh, band uh, located also um, in the bottom of the screen. Uh, so you can click there and choose the um, correct channel for accessing the interpretation. This webinar will not uh, have PowerPoint presentation presentations or any visual material shown on the screen for accessibility purposes. Um, only presenters um, when speaking will have their camera on, but we ask everybody else to keep their camera off in order to have full access to the international sign interpretation and the other accessibility uh, resources available for this uh, webinar. We um, hope and we are inviting everyone to post questions throughout the session using the chat box. Questions will be read out um, later on when we come to the Q&A session um, in this webinar. And uh, finally, a gentle reminder um, for all the speakers that um, six minutes is the time allocated for each presentation in order to have sufficient time for discussion and uh, closing remarks by all of you. Once again, uh, welcome to the webinar, maximizing the use and value of the disability data, data partnership for inclusive development. On behalf of the organizers, um, we first want to acknowledge the World um, Data Forum organized by um, colleagues from the United Nations and the space giving to uh, this very important topic. As a way of introduction, I would only like to highlight that the journey that we have gone through so far regarding disability data um, has been not only a great experience um, in terms of uh, promoting the right of person with disabilities and the right to um, data, if we want to call it, if we want to call it that way. But especially this journey has been um, extremely useful because we have, I think, all learned that in order to advance the agenda around disability data, partnerships are key. We cannot do what we are doing regarding disability data without having the great support from universities, from academia, from uh, a major international NGOs working in the field of disability and development, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I think the, the the fact that we are together today discussing around data and disability is an example of what I was uh, just saying. However, um, as I always like to say, there is still um, 
a lot to 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 be done and um, we are really far from uh, reaching what we agreed regarding person with disabilities and data when we were thinking about the sustainable development goals and maybe the best example of saying how far or demonstrating how far uh, we are um, with from 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 reaching the ideal scenario is the fact that um, out of the ten global indicators uh, for development that um, included the need for the segregated data for persons with disabilities, only two, only two out of ten are actually collecting. Um, information and data around persons with disabilities. So we can certainly say that 10 was already very little. And in that very minimum number, only two 20% um, um, indicators are actually collecting data around persons with, uh, with disabilities. However, besides always asking for more, we come to the table with ideas, with proposals. So I would quickly um, just, in order to set the scene, uh, share with you four of uh, what we believe as uh, the civility community can be um, good examples moving forward in, in, in regards to collecting data with uh, for and with person with, uh, with disabilities. The first, one, the first uh, element to highlight is consultation. We cannot think of uh, advancing the disability agenda and in particular the data uh, agenda for persons with disabilities if we don't consult with organization of persons with disabilities, if we don't put organization of persons with disabilities in the center. The second element is that organization of persons with disabilities already collect an enormous amount of information and from the disability community, we are convinced that citizen generated data is a fantastic tool, tool that should be more formalized and incorporated in many different um, sp spaces around data, because the amount of information that organizations of persons with disabilities are collecting, it's, uh, it's something that we cannot miss. So the opportunity that the data agenda has by including this citizen generated data through organization of persons with disabilities um, cannot be missed. The third element is, as I said at the beginning, um, and it's included in the title of this webinar, uh, partnership. Um, without uh, partners um, and um, with, with, uh, with the risk of uh, leaving many key partners uh, outside my list um, from the stakeholder group of persons with disabilities and from the International Disability Alliance, our closest partner working in this field, SCBM Global Disability Inclusion, under the leadership of Dr. Elizabeth Lockwood um, um, and many others. I see Sophie on this call and, uh, and, and, and one of the member of the International Disability Alliance, uh, the colleagues from Kenya, et cetera, et cetera. But I think that um, this journey together with uh, partners, uh, CBM Global International, uh, CBM Global Disability Inclusion, um, and many others is a good example of how partnership can be, can be more effective. And the fact that as a result of that partnership between IDA, the stakeholder group of persons with disabilities and CBM Global, um, we are um, now in a position to say that we have a disability data toolkit um, that has been transformed in a fantastic initiative that includes training, includes workshops, um, et cetera, et cetera. So that is a, a good example of, of, of how partnership can be effective if, if they are uh, well set up and, and in a consultative uh, manner. And the last ingredient that I would say is um, capacity building. We know that organization of persons with disabilities needs to develop. We need to develop our skills in order to be more effective, in order to uh, collect, analyze, and push for more data regarding persons with disabilities. But for that, we need a further investment in organization of persons with disabilities. Financially, technical um, assistance, uh, partnership, transferring knowledge, um, and uh, making sure that what we are delivering is in line with the Convention on the Right of Persons uh, with Disabilities Standards and um, useful for the disability agenda. Colleagues, um, this was just a very uh, general overview of where we are and what we want to achieve. 
but um, the most interesting uh, part of this conversation will come from our um, distinguished um, guests, distinguished panelists. So with no further ado, let me introduce uh, Sally Duta, the Chief Executive Officer of uh, United Disabled Persons of Kenya, um, who will be sharing a concrete example um, about partnership on data and person with disabilities and how that partnership is already giving us concrete results for advancing the agenda in Kenya. Sally, welcome and the floor is yours. Thank you so much, uh, Jose. Um, good morning all, good evening, wherever you may be. Um, in Kenya, we have um, adopted a partnership approach um, on data. And as OPDs, we normally conduct advocacy on disability data. And there are a few key things we've learned um, from our process so far. So I'm going to share with you some seven points. One, um, and this might be an obvious one, um, data advocacy is a journey. Um, effecting systemic change is a process. Um, for instance, for us in Kenya, it took us over two years to have the um, Washington Group of Short Questions module uh, included in the national census. Um, that journey has taught us that uh, there are false starts, uh, there are challenges, but we must press on. Uh, the second one is that um, because of that need to have a long-term perspective um, in that advocacy, we must strengthen technical capacities um, of persons with disabilities and OPDs so that they can engage meaningfully um, in data processes at all levels. Um, you've also mentioned it, Jose. Um, now we are talking about citizen-generated data um, as a way of contributing to official statistics, and there is need to empower OPDs uh, so that they can be able to contribute their data to government. Then three, um, there is need to invest um, financially in, in uh, OPDs. There are a lot of um, you know, challenges when it comes to investing in OPDs, uh, but we must um, invest in OPDs for them to monitor implementation of government commitments um, on data on persons with disabilities. For example, um, here in Kenya, our government has made commitments to implement the principles of the Inclusive Data Charter. Um, and also it made various commitments uh, on collecting data and using data on persons with disabilities. And uh, only OPDs um, and other stakeholders really um, can implement and put government to account on the commitments that they've made. Um, through our work, uh, we've learned that uh, collaborations and partnerships on data analysis are very important so that beyond collecting data uh, on persons with disabilities, we are interpreting what the data is telling us um, about the situation of persons with disabilities. Um, and with that collaboration, uh, we are very uh, keen on ensuring that uh, OPDs are strengthened so that they are able to do data analysis. We have also seen the need to pursue um, formal partnerships uh, and collaborations between different stakeholders, including OPDs, um, for collecting and using sector-specific um, data on situations of persons with disabilities. Um, for example, in health, um, in water and sanitation, in labor markets, in education, uh, among others. We're also learning that uh, beyond the use of the Washington Group short module, um, we have a lot of work um, in advocating for collection of data and information particularly during a population surveys that our government conducts so that they're able to bring out um, barriers that persons with disabilities face um, in participation and the support they need so that they're able to participate effectively in development and in all aspects of society. So the aspects around barriers to participation are not covered uh, by the Washington module. And lastly, um, in order to support data dialogues, uh, we must also continuously sensitize different stakeholders on the UNCRPD and other legislations. 
Um, sometimes we make assumptions that um, we have good legislations here in Kenya and the government is aware. But throughout our five-year journey, we've learned um, that there is need to continuously uh, sensitize on these principles of equality, of inclusion, so that uh, persons with disabilities are counted, so that information and data about persons with disabilities is collected and is used for decision making. Uh, that's our experience so far in Kenya. Thank you so much. I'm happy to participate in the discussion. Back to you, Jose. Thank you, Sally. Thank you for um, bringing a concrete example of how partnerships, capacity building, and uh, and working around uh, a joint advocacy objective is is possible, and the results, the the concrete impact of um, of the work. Thank you, Sally, for your for your presentation. Um, next, we have our um, distinguished panelist, and I'm sure I will mispronounce uh, your name and apologies in advance. Ling Jiang Dai. Um, Deputy Director of uh, China Disabled People Federation um, Information Center. And uh, Dai will introduce us to how big data can help um, organizations like um, the Federation in planning for services for persons with disabilities. Um, welcome and to the panel and the floor is yours. I would like to um, the logistic team uh, give me a confirmation that we can hear our presenter. I cannot. Yeah, there is like a super far away noise, but we cannot hear anything else. Thank you. So if our presenter die can try to fix the technical issue, otherwise we can come back later on. I think that would be good because we cannot reach anything. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. So can I can I invite now um our third speaker, Nata um and um apologies but if um Elizabeth Lockwood can help me here introducing my third speaker. That would be really appreciated. I'm just facing a little technical issue also here. Yes, uh, absolutely. Um, apologies for this. Um, I'd like to introduce Nada Jafar. She is head of statistical policies and coordination unit at United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Western Asia, ESQA. And she will present good practices of multi-stakeholder partnerships to strengthen disability data in the ESQA region. Neda, please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth and uh, Jose, and uh, welcome uh, uh, all participants to this uh, important uh, session. Uh, my presentation will be on expanding coverage of data on disability. As you know, global awareness of disability inclusive development is increasing. And as a result, demand for disability data and information on the well being of persons with disabilities have been on the increase as well. The United Nations Conventions on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, CRPD, promotes the full uh, integration of persons with disabilities in society. It specifically references the importance of international development in addressing the rights of persons with disabilities. The 2030 Agenda for sustainable development clearly states that the disability cannot be a reason or criteria for lack of access to development programming and the realization of human rights. Both the 2030 Agenda and CRPD stress the importance of 
data for designing, implementing, monitoring, and evaluating more disability inclusive policies. The Sustainable Development Goals framework includes seven targets that explicitly refer to persons with disabilities and six further targets on persons in vulnerable situations, which include persons with disabilities. ASQA uh, also developed a framework on disability uh, uh, indicators. 115 indicators were developed or uh, 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 produced in a framework to bridge the gap between policy and statistics. It is a three-dimensional disability framework that maps disability-related indicators to three major development frameworks, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, the CRPD, and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. All the 115 indicators are based on collecting data from hospital surveys and censuses implemented by national statistical offices using the Washington Group questions on functioning to produce standard indicators, mainly the prevalence of disability in different policy areas. In the Arab region, 19 out of 20 member states have been collecting data from various surveys using the Washington Group questions, labor force survey, health survey, violence against survey, all types of uh, surveys and census. Lately, there has been a large demand for further information on the well-being of on persons with disabilities and increasing involvement of major and various stakeholders other than the national statistical offices in the region. So ESQA has been also working with the member countries in consultation with the NSOs, NGOs, and other international organizations. Uh, and in partnership with them, we have been developing a standalone survey to collect detailed information on the well being of persons with disabilities and also providing technical services to countries in exploring uh, various sources of data and information, including enhancing uh, data analysis. With regard to countries' uh, own initiatives, research institutes like KISER and the Council of Persons with Disabilities in Jordan also exploring to collect more information on the well being of people with disabilities, their access to services and facilities, including obstacles they face and attitudes and behaviors that may impact their participation in daily life activities. The absence of attention to the issue of violence against women with disabilities prompted the National Council for Women in Egypt to implement the 2020 Violence Against Women with Disability Survey based on registered women who have experienced violence. Information confirmed that while all women may be subjected to forms of violence, those with disabilities face particular risks. NGO studies show that more than 60% of Syrian refugees' households include a person with disability, and one in five of refugees in Lebanon and Jordan have a disability. The information is used to encourage those actors to adapt the ways they conduct their humanitarian programs by including the needs of people with disabilities. It is therefore vital to explore data from various stakeholders. Different data sources serve different purposes, and each stakeholder will have a vital role in producing important and unique information that would help complete the picture and improve the well being of persons with disabilities. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Naita. Um, thank you for your presentation, and um, and even more um, importantly, for um, bringing the perspective around uh, how different stakeholders can contribute to this uh, to this work, and uh, also the tools available and how people can access the tools and use the tools. I think um, a, a key a key component of advancing this agenda is not only to know what the tools are and how can they how they can be used, 
but also the role of different stakeholders. So thank you for, for bringing that perspective. Um, I would like to try once more with our second speaker, um, Dai from China Disabled um, People Federation Information Center to see if we can hear um, Dai well. Can, can we try please? Dai, go ahead. Can you hear me? This sounds very remote. Ladies and gentlemen, great to see you all here virtually. My topic is we are using the big data from the Federation to offer precise services. China has 85 million people with disabilities. So we are setting a high targets to solve all the questions faced by the people with the disabilities. It seems to me that his collection is lost. Sorry, the collection is lost, the signal is lost. Okay. Perfect, perfect, no no problem. Uh, apologies for the technical inconveniences that we are facing, we are gonna fix it soon. Um, can I just get a confirmation from the logistic team that my voice is going through properly? Yes, all good, thank you. Perfect, Jose. thank you very much, Gina. Um, and I guess these are the nice challenges of the, uh, of having webinars, um, webinars or hybrid events like this allow us to have experts from around the world, um, and um, and I guess um, this this uh, technical challenge challenge will will be fixed uh, soon. Um, so let me um, invite our next speaker, um, Gon Chen, um, director of the Institute for Population Research from the University of Pekin. Um, I think when when uh, when planning this webinar, uh, we try to have a balance between um, representative from the disability community and also from the academia and other and other sectors. So we hope to hear um, in the next uh, in the next couple of minutes how um, academia, how universities are contributing. Um, to data, um, to the data agenda, and uh, ensuring that person with disabilities in the center. So a quick revision of what has been achieved over the last couple of decades, and how data is uh, useful for this particular topic of, of population. Uh, welcome to the panel, and the floor is yours. Thank you so much for your kind words. It's my great pleasure to be invited to attend this data forum. It is highly relevant and essential for me to say a few words. Now we are talking about the data governance and data partnership. I know that the role played by the statisticians is also critical. We want to find a better way to collect good data. That is a starting point for us to discuss this topic. I'm a researcher. I'm from the Peking University. And I want to help you. And I want to let you know what we are doing here within the Institute of Population Research of the University to offer recommendations and advices to the competent authorities in China. As known as all, China has altogether 85 million people with disabilities at present. We are collecting data from various sectors. We have data from the individuals, from the NGOs, from the governments, as well as from the communities. So from my personal view, I want to share with you how we are standardizing the data. Without the standardization of data, we cannot use it properly. We want to use the data and use it to make national strategies. Mostly, China is using national strategy to grow the economy and to provide services to the people with disabilities. From that point on, we have to rely very much on the official data before we can make a great move. The mainstream data or the core data is from the government agencies. That's how we're going to make strategies. 
I'm from Peking University, and I'm also responsible for the collection of the data. And we are providing monitoring survey for the entire nation. Mostly, we want to collect better data to provide policy recommendations. That is how we are working with the government. We are also doing the awareness promotion projects to let the entire society to understand the, important, the importance of helping those people in need. We, do, we should never forget the important role played by the people with the disabilities. We can never le left them, we can leave them behind. It is part of the social welfare programs in China and the people with the disabilities can also be great consumers and buyers. To be more specific, in the era of big data and AI applications, the people with disabilities are highly innovative. They can do a lot of things, but we should know what are they really want and need. We need to do the survey and analysis to start off. Years ago, the statistics in China were well developed, but we have to admit we have new strategies in the modernization drive of China. China is still in the process of studying the data and to launch an inclusive program to monitor, to collect, and to analyze the outcome. The current Chinese strategy includes making a strategy in the beginning in the process of in the next five years or 10 years, we also want to create more benefits to the people with the disabilities. China now launches a digital China program as well as a program to re revitalize the villages. I know that we have to, we should never take the people with the disabilities away. Generally speaking, the development and inclusion of the people with disabilities is a natural part of the national strategy, both at economic side as well as the social welfare side. As a result, we have to take in account the importance of the social economic changes as well as how, what is the role the people with disabilities should play. In the long run, we should improve the legislation of the people with the disabilities law, with a good law in place, we could make better strategies for them, better mechanisms for them. That is the first thing. The second is about the standards of uh, collecting data. China is a vast country. We have to collect country following some standards in China before we can benchmarking, benchmarking standards with international communities. The third is we have to open the data, ensure the transparency, and ensure the monitoring in a continuous approach. The next is So this should go hand in hand with the National Health Project, National Poverty Alleviation Project, National Capacity Building Project, the National Science and Technology Innovation Project. So the development of the China Disability Statistics System should be going hand in hand with them so as to improve the potential of the people with disabilities and provide a better life quality for them. So at present, our focus of the statistic analysis of the disability in China uh, has focused on the analysis of the current data. And also we, are trying to find better ways to provide benefits through the targeted analysis of the situation faced by the uh, people with disabilities and provided them with support to join the journey of pursuing common prosperity and also provide them with better support, especially in the process of aging trend. We do hope that we can get support from UN as well as uh, IDA and many other stakeholders and partners, we do hope that we can work together to push forward the, to improve the collection analysis under uh, 
management and the sharing and utilization of the data of people with disabilities so as we can contribute more to the data advocacy and data governance for those people with uh, disabilities. Thank you very much for this opportunity to share my perspective. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you uh, for the presentation. Um, indeed, the, 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 the fact that we continue seeing examples of how data is uh, being collected and, uh, and the use of data. Um, when, when, we, when we interact or when we work with uh, different stakeholders and, uh, and especially when, uh, when we develop programs and projects with governments and uh, UN agencies and uh, international um, stakeholders, one, if not the first question that we are always asked is, what is the what is the benefit? Why do we have to collect data? Why is uh, why is always better to collect data for persons with disabilities? And I think what we have just heard is a good example of how data can um, allow us to better plan, design, implement, and monitor um, different programs and projects, whatever whatever the program or project is about. Um, it can be from health to education, from uh, population growth to sustainable development. But the fact that we are incorporating the perspective of persons with disabilities, not only because of the size of the population of persons with disabilities in any country, but also for the um, good way of the of the contributions that persons with disabilities um, we are ready to make um, in in any aspect of life. Let me um, for the third time and um, thanking in advance uh, some for um, jumping in and uh, help us in um, delivering the speech from uh, Mr. Dai. So uh, Mr. Sam, the floor is yours and um, thank you. So I will deliver the speech on behalf of Mr. Dai uh, due to the technical uh, issues. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hello? Go ahead, please. So on behalf of Mr. Dai, I would like to make the uh, presentation. So the topic is the accurate service based on the data of disabled people with disabilities. In China, we have 85 million people with disabilities. To solve the problem, we have to know who are they, where do they live? what is the living condition and what are their needs. The better understanding of their situation will help us to provide a better care and support for them. So China pays high attention to the cause of uh, development of people with disabilities. We pay special care for them. And we also have made a lot of efforts to guarantee their equal rights, improve their livelihood, enhance their uh, development and also promote high quality development to provide them with a better support in order to better tap into the role of big data in supporting their life. Since, 20, uh, since 2015, we began to build the data of people with disabilities. And we launched a nationwide real name survey of people with disabilities and organized the personnel to visit villages and households every year to learn about their needs. By 2023, we have collected big data on the basic living conditions and needs of more than 37 millions of people with uh, disabilities. Through annual nationwide survey on the basic conditions of people with disabilities, we have gained a comprehensive understanding of their basic needs, their condition in terms of housing, education, employment, uh, basic medical care, rehabilitation, as well as the, their engagement in culture and sports activities. So this promoted the connection between the needs of the people with disability and the public services, and also expanded our service channel for them and improved the diversity and convenience of services provided for them. At the same time, China uh, Disabled People's Federation carried out annual statistic work on covering their conditions in rehabilitation, education, employment, social security, uh, culture, sports, and the interest in right protection. We also have published the statistic uh, report on the 
uh, development situation of people with disability. The annual statistic data provide reference and the data support for policy makings and decision makings at government level. In addition, the China Federation for People with Disabilities has shared and compared information with various ministries and commissions sharing identity information of so persons with disabilities and offer them with minimal living allowances and also uh, information is about subs subsidy offered to them and uh, college admission information, endowment insurance information for both uh, people with disabilities in urban and rural areas. In recent years, we have actually analyzed the basic status survey data on their career development about the living conditions. And we have done correlation analysis of all the data collected. And uh, so far, 13.56 uh, million persons with disabilities have been covered by the uh, data base we have established. And the National People's Congress Data Index System covers 23 overall indicators, 34 individual indicators and service resource indicators in nine categories, including social security, education, employment, rehabilitation, cultural sports, barrier-free development for women and children with disabilities, as well as uh, their resource relying on basic geographic information technology, a comprehensive application platform for the data of people with disabilities has been established to visually display the data indicator. So we can offer them targeted services and understand their needs in a more accurate way. And this also help us to provide more support and more scientific policy makings for them. And also the, this will also help us to gain a deeper understanding of their need, their living conditions, and also connect with relevant stakeholders to offer them more targeted support. So now we are not only providing passive care, but also providing active care and support to them. So this will help the people with disabilities to better engage in social and economic development activities. We would like to share with you our experience of building this database. Thank you very much. That is pretty end of my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much um, for the presentation, Mr. Sam, um, for, for reminding uh, us um, of the role that organization of persons with disabilities like the Federation can play. Um, and for also highlighting um, with a concrete example, something that I said at the beginning, which is um, the different source of information that we can use for um, planning and designing programs around persons with disabilities and for the whole society. Um, if there is something that the disability data agenda has uh, shown us clearly is how key innovation is um, in terms of funding uh, information regarding um, how the analysis can be done, et cetera, et cetera. So your example is a, is a good way of uh, showing the role that everybody has to play and is welcome to play in, in this agenda. Next, we have our colleague, Sophie Mitra, uh, joining from uh, the United States. So Sophie, thank you very much for um staying uh, uh so late and available to join the webinar um professor mitra is uh, a professor of economics and director of the um, disability and data um, consortium from uh, fordham university uh, but even more important um professor mitra is uh it's also an advocate for the cause of person with disabilities and data so uh, sophie welcome and the floor is yours Thank you very much, Jose. Um, hello, everyone, and thank you for attending this uh, session. So we have heard earlier about disability data gaps and how to fill them using uh, multi-stakeholder partnerships. And we heard about the progress by, made by some countries and some regions in meeting the disability data gap. However, still to date, national statistics 
are rarely disaggregated by disability status. Often the little data we find on disability focuses on disability prevalence when we look at uh, census or survey reports. This has contributed to persons with disabilities being often invisible in human rights and development policy debates. The Disability Data Initiative, or DDI, aims to contribute to close the disability gap by making internationally comparable statistics on disability publicly available and accessible. We aim to inform debates and facilitate policy studies and advocacy for the rights of persons with disabilities and groups at the intersection of multiple identities, such as women with disabilities or older persons with disabilities. So the, the link, um, the web link is, uh, is in the chat box. So the, we, who are we? We are a team of researchers based in East Asia and the Pacific, Europe, Latin America and the Caribbean, North America, South Asia, and Sub-Saharan Africa. We have a steering committee with various stakeholders, including international organizations, policymakers, advocates, and researchers. And we mainly do two things. First, we regularly provide a systematic analysis of the questions on disability in national censuses and household surveys globally. We assess if data sets have questions that meet international standards of comparability. These are the United Nations principles and recommendations for censuses, according to which there needs to be questions about functional difficulties in at least four core domains seeing, hearing, walking, cognition, and they may follow the exact Washington group uh, short set of questions. So we have found that uh, one in five of the data sets we reviewed have internationally comparable functional difficulty questions. About a third of the countries we reviewed still do not seem to have such questions in their national household surveys and censuses. That means that they may lack data that is necessary to monitor the sustainable development goals for persons with disabilities and to implement Article 31 of the CRPD, the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, which requires that state bodies, quote, collect appropriate information, including statistical and research data, end of quote. The second thing we do is that we take advantage of the increasing availability of internationally comparable uh, disability uh, questions in censuses and survey data to disaggregate indicators by disability status. So far, our focus has been on producing proof of concept reports to demonstrate that disaggregating statistics by disability stat status is possible using national surveys and censuses. The 2021 report showed that disability disaggregation is possible using a variety of surveys and censuses for 41 countries. In the 2022 report, disability disaggregation was focus on, focused on a subgroup, women, using data from the multiple indicator cluster survey of UNICEF for 35 countries. The 2023 report, which will be released in uh, June, is a proof of concept that disability disaggregation is possible at the subnational level using demographic and health survey data and census data. So we zoom in and produce disability disaggregated indicators at the regional uh, level with DHS data and at the regional and district levels using census data. This offers new opportunities for monitoring the situation of persons with disabilities um, locally. So some of the results are not going to surprise you. We have found significant inequalities for adults with disabilities in terms of education, work, multidimensional poverty, and subjective well-being. Overall, the results show that policy work is very much needed to curb these inequalities and realize the, uh, the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. But more immediately, 
The results show that disaggregating development indicators by disability status using nationally and subnationally representative survey or census data is doable. We need more national and subnational data sets that regularly collect data on functional difficulties. We also need more usage of existing data sets with such questions to produce disability disaggregated data. There are currently lots of opportunities um, in the disability field for data analysts to support and inform policy and advocacy, including in big data. So this is critical for policymakers to be able to monitor the situation of persons with disabilities and develop evidence-based uh, policies. So you can follow us on Twitter at D underscore D underscore initiative or email us at rcd at fordham.edu if you'd like to get updates on our work. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, thank you, Professor Mitra. Um, thanks for the work that you are doing from the university and for um, leading this consortium in, uh, in a consultative manner. Um, if I'm not mistaken, the first time we got in touch was specifically about that, uh, how a university initiative should consult with organization of persons with disabilities, and that's how Professor Maitra and, and I first met. So great example um, already with concrete results, um, but I would say that um, for, for us it's, it's equally important the how and, and the way that you are dealing uh, with the consortium and consulting with persons with disabilities and their representative organizations is, is key. Our last speakers um, is Professor uh, Lim from uh, Nanjing University. Um, <clears throat> he sends uh, his um, regrets for not being able to join us, uh -huh. but um, we will rely on Mr. Sam to deliver um, his presentation. So on behalf of uh, Professor Lim, I would like to welcome back uh, Mr. Sam for um, the final uh, presentation. But before I do that, please, um, a gentle reminder to all the participants to post questions on the chat box as um, after we hear from our last presenter, we would have a good 20 or 15 minutes for uh, interactive discussion and closing remarks by all panelists. So, uh, Mr. Sam, um, over to you again. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. On behalf of the Mr. Ling, I'd like to share with you on the topic of the role of data exchange and sharing and promoting the integrated development of persons with disability and how it can contribute to the common prosperity of all persons with disability and ensure their full inclusion in the sustainable development goals. In the past few years, adverse impact of COVID-19 pandemic has amplified the global inequality and increased the level of exclusion of persons with disabilities. As countries around the world pay more attention to disability statistics, the disability statistics systems are gradually being established and data have become more and more diversified. Some countries and regions have gained good experience. China in particular has gained effective experience in using data to promote people with disabilities with battle against the poverty, as well as the response to the COVID-19 pandemic. We have gained some experience. First, data exchange and sharing has helped people with disability in China to achieve the poverty reduction goal set by the UN 10 years ahead of the schedule, laying a solid foundation for their full inclusion and the realization of sustainable development goals. In the process of building a moderately prosperous society, the Chinese government has made it clear that no one with disability should be left behind. This is our commitment. A well of society without the disability people involved is not a well of society in a real sense. The exchange and sharing of the data of China Disabled Person Federation National People's Congress with data from various government departments has provided favorable condition for more than 85 million disabled people in China. And this is also very important. And this also paved the way for disabled people to join the well of society development and this success also reflects China's institutional advantage. China's efforts to deliver comprehensive well of life and achieve targeted poverty alleviation involve 
food, clothing, education, housing, medical care, and other aspects. They are in line with the sustainable development goals set by the UN. And also we provide China's solution for the global progress of sustainable development. And second, the common prosperity that China is pursuing is the common prosperity for all people, both at material and spiritual level. Both are equally important and cannot be achieved without losing one another. The Chinese government has pledged that no one should be left behind on the road for common prosperity. And compared to targeted alleviation, the COVID alleviation covers a wider range of area and a group of people. So this should ensure that the needs and services for the people with disability should be fully integrated into the process of common prosperity and the poverty alleviation, and also help achieve the UN Sustainable Goal at a higher level. We are formulating an action program to promote common prosperity Statistic monitoring, assessment, evolution of common prosperity will create a greater and broader demand for exchange and sharing of data on people with disability. With the acceleration of digital China, data exchange sharing will play a bigger role in integrated development of person with disability. The Chinese government is setting up a national data bureau to coordinate the integration, sharing, development, and the utilization of data resources. This will also create favorable conditions for data exchange and sharing for people with disabilities. And disability statistic standards will become more consistent among departments. Disability statistic data will also be continuously enriched and improved. At present, the world not only solve the disability data gap, but also we need to pay more attention to the consistency of the statistic standards. With the development of global digitalization, the problem of data gap will continue to be eased. And narrowed, but how to identify a person with disability and ensure the comparability of standards domestically and internationally? This is a real problem that needs to be addressed urgently. Only by addressing this issue can we uh, integrate, how can we achieve the integrated development of persons with disability and can they be compared internationally and it be included? in the sustainable development goals. So I suggest that we should strengthen international exchanges and cooperation on disability statistic standards and regularly organize academic conferences like this one so that we can discuss the problem and also share the successful experience and improve the inclusion of the disability people in our pursuit for sustainable development and common prosperity. That's it. That is the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Sam, on behalf of Professor Lim. Um, distinguished panelists um, and, and participants, um, time, time has, has uh, fly and uh, we only have two minutes left and we want to be respectful of uh, everybody's schedule. So I would like to propose that um, instead of having an interactive dialogue now, we can share some of the questions with the speakers and probably um, get some answers from them and share it with the organizers and explore a way in which participants can access to the knowledge that our um, distinguished speakers can um, can share. Um, in closing, um, I think we have heard um, in this 60-minute uh, session the importance of uh, collecting data for persons with disabilities and the role that different stakeholders can play and we should play um, in this agenda. We really hope that um, once you walk away from this session, you take with you concrete tools, uh, but even the more, 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 more importantly, uh, people that you know um, are working um, in this field. And so you can connect with them uh, using the existing resources uh, put in place by the organizers to connect with them, to keep the discussion. Um, again, on behalf of all the organizers, um, I really want to thank uh, everybody for joining, and I hope you have found this uh, session useful. A big thanks to the logistics teams uh, that have managed to put this uh, session in place in multiple languages and fully accessible. My colleague, Dr. Elizabeth Lockwood, who has led um, the organization of this workshop, and we hope to be in touch uh, again soon. Have a wonderful rest of the um, forum and even more productive days uh, when it comes to persons with disabilities and um, data. Thank you.